Hello and welcome to the ICND2 CCNA with me, Ryan. This is the introduction to the video series. This is going to cover all of the ICND2 topics, just like we did in the CSENT. And by the end of this, you'll be able to obtain your CCNA. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and now Facebook. This is the optional introduction where I'm going to go through the outline of the course, what's involved in the course, who it's aimed at, and how it should be used. And then we're going to jump into some of the topics with the first one being VLANs. So moving straight on then, what's to come in the course? There's a lot to cover. Um, not as much as the CSENT, I would say, but a lot more technical. Uh, and the reason I say not as much as the CSENT, primarily because we spent a long time on the CSENT covering the topic in detail. And some of those details kind of bleed over into the ICND2. So what we're going to see is as we go through this, we're going to start to see some of the topics overlapping. So who is this course designed for? It's designed for anyone looking to achieve their CCNA and people who have already done their CSENT. So as we know, the CCNA can be done in a single exam or two exams. This video series goes down the uh, route of two exams, which is the recommended uh, best practice from Cisco for those getting into the industry. But of course, the content can still be used for those looking to do the single composite exam. So how to use the course? Pretty straightforward. It's just like the CSENT, it's going to be a mixture of videos. I don't know how many videos that will be because I plan them as I go. But hopefully it's going to be a lot less than the CSENT because like I said already, some of the topics will overlap. But what's really important here is you use other resources. I say this all the time throughout the video series um, through the CSENT. Watching one video series or reading one book is normally not enough. So diverse, look into using other resources, at least use the official Cisco press book because again that's what the exam is based on so make sure you're using that um, and also don't use uh, my delay in video production as an excuse for you not studying. A lot of people through the CSENT contacted me saying they've not studied because I didn't release a video this week. That's a poor excuse. Go get a book, study, you don't need my videos. My videos are just going to be a nice supplement to help you through the journey. So I've mentioned it a few times already. There'll be topics missing from the ICND2, and that's because I covered them more than enough in the CSENT. And as we go throughout the blueprint, I will mention that and link the videos. And for those looking to support me, a lot of messages, especially on LinkedIn, sort of saying how they can support the channel and support myself. Simple, just subscribe, follow, share. There's nothing uh, financially required for you guys to actually uh, make use of this content. The whole point of it is to be free content for everyone in the community to get into the uh, world of Cisco networking or networking in general. So what we want to do now is just jump into the blueprint and have a high level look of what it is that we've got coming up and maybe have a discussion about some of the stuff that's already been covered in the CSENT. So to find the actual blueprint, go to your favorite search engine and type in ICND2 exam topics, blueprint, or just type in this sort of exam code and you'll somehow get to this page. And this page kind of gives us a as detailed a view as we need for the actual topics covered in the exam. Now, just like the uh, CSENT, the topics are split into uh, different sections with the majority of the topics in, of course, switching and routing, um, but not enough, um, but enough in the other categories for us to ensure that they are also a key focus. I think the exam mark will vary kind of from 80 to 85 or so percent. So it's important that we cover all of the uh, topics outlined in enough detail to get that pass. Just like the CSENT, I'm going to start the video series working through the blueprint, starting from the top and working our way through each of the actual subcategories as I go. Uh, the reason for that is simply because one, that's how I done the CSENT and it tend to, to work quite nice. 
Um, it's not necessarily the best way of learning some of these technologies. Um, and I may bleed in and out of some of the topics, but I, I, I try my best to ensure that they're all there. Um, one thing to also note, as I said in the previous slides, that there are some topics that will overlap and I won't cover in this video series, but I will revert you to the video that can cover that topic in enough detail for the exam. So a good example of that is the access uh, ports. We've talked about access and trunk ports a lot in the CSENT. Uh, we talked about adding and removing them from trunks, and we also talked about DTP. Those uh, layer two topics will not be in the ICND2 videos, but voice VLANs, VTP, STP, EFA channels, and the rest of this will be in the video series. So as I go throughout, and talk about some of the VLANs and so forth, there will be some expectation that you have prior knowledge because as I, as I said, this course is for people who have already obtained their CSENT. So what do we have to come then? VTP, uh, voice VLANs, so we'll talk about VLANs there. Uh, we're going to talk about spanning tree in a lot of detail and EFA channels and then some of the layer two security mechanisms that we can use like DHCP snooping. So there's gonna be quite a few videos there covering those topics. And then as we finish layer two, we'll move into layer three. And this is where, of course, it gets more fun. <laughs> we have a uh, router on a stick. Something we've discussed and configured um, very briefly in the CSENT, but we will go through that along with SVIs uh, now and it's a refresher and a new video and the reason for that is because the better we understand these basic concepts of routing the easier the more advanced topics will become like redistribution and summarization so we've talked quite a bit about things like OSPF and EIGRP already but of course with the ICND2 we're taking that to the next level and introducing multi-area OSPF and along with actually IPv6 for EIGRP so some exciting topics there as we move on through the syllabus. Moving on, WAN technologies. I don't think we've covered much here at all, really. Um, I think we've only discussed point-to-point, -point, hub and spoke, and full mesh. And that was really from a high-level point of view to be able to identify by looking at a topology what that topology actually represents. We did not talk about single or dual-homed. Um, I think MPLS we didn't talk about, we only used it as a concept, as a, an example. So there'll be a lot of discussion around MPLS, a lot of discussion around VPNs. Um, some of this really important because as we move into sort of the service provider, we need to know what we're buying from our service provider and why we might want an MPLS solution. So we can go in a bit of detail there and most likely create a video or two regarding real life scenarios rather than the exam topics. And then we've got the standard PPP, so actually using point to point protocol for WAN interfaces. Um, like for example, if you were to buy an ADSL service and your ISP used um, authentication, we can actually look at my home router and have a look how that's been set up. Uh, and then yeah, more or less kind of tunneling. Most of these technologies like MPLS, DMVPN, VPN in general, and GRE are all considered sort of tunnel connectivity, um, but we'll go into kind of why they differ and, and why that's important to understand and why tunnels are now heavily used throughout. And then we're going to move on to infrastructure services. So starting off with first hot redundancy protocol, HSRP, which is the hot standby routing protocol. That's a Cisco proprietary protocol to help us have a default gateway spread across multiple devices. So we're going to look into that. Uh, looking at cloud uh, resources, which is kind of a new topic, if you like, in the world of networking um, around virtual services. So this, these are how you can use the cloud services router. So Cisco actually gives you a router that you can now put on a VM box. So I actually have an environment that we can look at and we can deploy some of these virtual routers. QoS, I think we've talked about QoS as a uh, theory, as a topic, but we haven't really discussed all the different types and we can have the difference between shaping and policing and congestion management as, as a whole. So we'll sort of cover that in a lot of detail. Um, 
access control list ACLs for traffic filtering. This I would say we discussed quite a bit. We created ACLs for many reasons, for many topics, such as NAT, as an example, in the CSENT. So I may have a look at whether uh, maybe a quick video is there to kind of use to bring us up to speed on the difference between the CSENT and uh, ICND2 for, VLAN, uh, for ACLs. And then last but not least, we've got the infrastructure maintenance. Uh, SNMP uh, we've talked about briefly, but we haven't talked about SNMP v3. Uh, IP SLA, so this is actually how you can use a router itself to monitor the quality of the link. So we'll discuss and demonstrate that. Uh, span, I think we talked about, but we'll probably get a little lab set up and demonstrate that. Same is true with TACAX and RADIUS. And then 5.5 is most likely kind of the newer bit of the ICND2 following the last update which was the stuff around kind of SDN now it's kind of a bit software defined networking it's a bit generic to sort of shove that in but we'll shove it in there for now and then we will discuss it in a bit more detail as we go throughout the course uh, and then troubleshooting basic end-to-end -end connectivity issues that's something we'll do throughout the course in all the various different topics that we cover as we progress so that's all we've got time for. It was just a quick video to go over what's going to be coming up through the ICND2 video series. We know why it's needed. It's the second part of the CCNA and we know who it's for. It's for those who have either covered the topics or have actually completed the actual exam for the CSEN and now looking to do the ICND2 for their CCNA. And of course, we know what the ICND2 actually is. We then went through the blueprints, looking at the LAN, the routing and infrastructure services, what's to come and why you may need to go back and watch some of the CSENT videos because not all the topics will be covered in the ICND2. I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.